Hi, Callie. Well, these two companies are going to be working together on multiple approaches to coronaviruses and, of course, most urgently for the one that causes COVID-19. Now, that is driving Veer's stock up quite a bit today with the news of that $250 million equity stake uh, from GSK. Uh, now, what Veer focuses on uh, is targeting antibodies isolated from survivors of disease, and in this case, both SARS and from COVID-19. And they find the best ones, then they engineer them uh, to make them into optimal medicines. Uh, so these companies are gonna be working together. They say they have two antibody candidates that they aim to bring in to human testing in a phase two trial within three to five months. And this comes, of course, as we mentioned with GSK, making that equity investment in Veer. Uh, and let's get right to our guest, who is the CEO of Veer, Dr. George Skangos, to tell us more about this partnership and the timelines. Dr. Skangos, it is great to have you with us. Tell us about the timelines, getting into human testing and how long it could potentially take uh, to get a drug for use more broadly. Sure, Meg. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. Appreciate, appreciate the interest. Uh, yeah, we're working together with JSK now. We have a huge amount of respect for uh, JSK and the capabilities they, they bring. Uh, we have two lead antibodies, as we've said before, uh, uh, targeting uh, COVID-2. They, they bind to it potently, and they are potent neutralizers of the virus. Uh, they are currently being manufactured uh, at Wuxi, uh, and uh, we have a uh, process development going on uh, together with Biotin. And we hope to be able to have those antibodies ready for clinical testing within three to five months. So it's a very accelerated timeline, recognizing uh, the urgency of the situation and, and the need to get some relief as quickly as we can. What does the timeline look like after that? Once you get this into, and you're skipping right over phase one, it sounds like going into humans in phase two, what did the timelines from then look like? Yeah, well, we, we will test the antibody in a couple of different ways, right? First, we want to understand if the antibody or to what extent the antibody can prevent people from getting the disease. So we'll test it as a pro, in a prophylactic setting. And we also want to understand whether or not the antibody can uh, treat people early in the disease and prevent them from progressing to respiratory distress. We are also likely to do a trial in uh, patients who are uh, sick and in respiratory distress to see if we can... Uh, uh, help to reverse that. So we'll do those three trial designs. Uh, there'll be, um, uh, you know, the time of a clinical trial is dependent on the time to enroll the patients and then how long you have to follow those patients. We are planning to do these trials on a worldwide basis so we can enroll very quickly. Uh, the follow-up period is typically will be 30 days or a relatively short period of time. So we're hopeful to get through the clinical trials in a matter of months. Uh, and then, um, assuming the antibody works to make that available to people as quickly as we can. I think everybody involved in the process, certainly GSK and we and the regulatory authorities, as well as clinicians who will be doing the trials, understand the urgency and are doing everything we can to accelerate the program, uh, you know, consistent with, of course, assuring patient safety. Uh, Mr. Skangos, it's Kelly back here in the studio. Thanks again for being with us. Uh, and and a early congrats again on, on what might be a, a big breakthrough here. So here's my question. Number one, uh, I understand that the antibodies uh, kind of come from blood donation, especially if there's people who have already had coronavirus. I looked at trying to give blood uh, lately. It's not that easy, as you might imagine right now. I'm not, not even clear to me if it's safe. Can you tell us if you need more of that and, and what people should be thinking about? And related to that, can you talk about the competitive landscape for bringing this product to market? Are you guys first? Do you think your technology is the best and why? Sure. Well, we, we uh, like the way we, of course, we like the way we generate antibodies. You know, we get these from patients who have recovered from the disease. So these are fully human antibodies made by people and they are uh, circulating in people already. Uh, so we, we believe they are uh, likely to be uh, safe and well tolerated. Uh, we'll, of course, have to test that, but we, we would, would anticipate that to be the case. Um, in this case, we isolated these antibodies from patients who recovered from SARS, not from COVID-2. Those are related viruses. Uh, so these are antibodies that neutralize SARS. And we screened a collection of SARS antibodies that we had previously isolated prior to this epidemic. And we screened them for their ability to neutralize COVID-2. Some of them are potently neutralizing for COVID-2 as well. And so these antibodies would recognize both viruses obviously recognize something that is the same in both viruses. It's been conserved over all the years uh, that these viruses have evolved separately. 
And so that part of the virus is probably harder for the virus to alter and therefore escape uh, the antibodies. So we think this is a very good way to isolate antibodies, and they have some uh, potential advantages in being able to prevent uh, viral right. escape. Right? We also have engineered the what's called the FC region, a part, a different part of the antibody, so that uh, it, it uh, in a way that in animal models induces uh, a T cell response, so a long-term response that protects the uh, animals even after the antibody is gone. And so we're going to test the ability of the antibodies to have the same effect in humans. Uh, and if they do, then in, you know, the antibodies can hopefully provide protection in the short term and leave the patient protected over the long term as well. So both the therapy and the vaccine. Well, Dr. Skangos, mm -hmm. it's such an important approach.